Yeah, that's absolutely right, Brad. It looks like the storm surge threat will be uh, one of the most significant we've seen in quite some time. We thought Irene was really bad, and boy, was it bad across a lot of Long Island Sound. It looks like Sandy, if our projections hold, will be even worse. Hard, hard to believe that a little over a year later, and we're looking at something that will probably rival and most likely even exceed what we had for Irene. So uh, let, let's talk about what we're expecting in terms of storm surge. We're looking at a 5 to 10 foot forecast storm surge across Long Island Sound. To put that in some perspective, the storm surge during Irene was four or five feet in most towns. So, yeah, this is a, a good bit more, and this is going to cause big problems all across the shoreline from Stamford and Greenwich all the way up towards Stonington. Looks like the most significant coastal flooding will likely be in the western part of the sound, but everyone needs to heed evacuation orders. Remember, you evacuate for water, you don't evacuate for wind. So if you're in an evacuation zone along the shoreline, or if you have a question about whether you are, you should make sure you ask a local official and, and, and make, make the best decision. And we recommend that you evacuate if you're asked to evacuate, because this will be unlike anything we've seen in quite some time based on um, our latest projections. Now let's take a look at why we're going to be on the worst part of this storm. Now with a hurricane making landfall in New Jersey, the heaviest rain is going to shift to the south or to the left of the storm's track and the strongest winds and the worst storm surge will be to the right of the storm's track. So that includes southern New England, Narragansett Bay we're very worried about up near uh, Rhode Island from Providence down toward Warwick and Cranston and then all of Long Island Sound all of Long Island, even the South Shore, and New York City, a devastating storm surge is expected on the island of Manhattan as well. So here's one of our computer models. This is exact track, and you can see the center of the storm at 4.30, right about here. Now watch the storm's track moving off to the northeast, and then it will begin to curve off to the northwest, and it makes landfall about 7 o'clock on Monday. But the worst of the impacts will be felt before the storm arrives, at least the center of the storm toward land. And we will see those effects continue through the evening and through the overnight hours, Monday into the first part of Tuesday. Then the storm is just going to sort of sit and spin over Pennsylvania. And we're going to see rain continuing off and on on Tuesday, along with the potential for more damaging winds on Tuesday. So we have a coastal flood warning in effect for Long Island Sound. We have a hurricane force wind warning in effect for Long Island Sound as well. Again, this is a very serious situation. We're expecting storm surge values uh, to be some of the highest we've seen in decades. In fact, in some areas, especially in the western part of the sound, the storm surge and the coastal flooding will exceed Irene. It will exceed the December 1992 nor'easter. It will exceed the blizzard of 78. And it may come close to the hurricane of 1938. That's what the latest we're hearing from the Hurricane Center from the National Weather Service and what we're looking at here in the Weather Center. That's a very serious situation. In the eastern part of the sound looks like this will be the worst coastal flooding since Hurricane Carol back in 1954. And the effects go inland as well. It's not just a shoreline storm. This is an everyone storm. We have a high wind warning in effect for the entire state, though the winds and the potential for wind damage will be greatest along the I-95 corridor. There is still a, a fairly large potential for tree and power line damage in inland Connecticut. We're expecting widespread power outages everywhere. High wind warning in effect. We're expecting wind gusts between 55 and 80 miles per hour. The highest numbers will be along the shoreline. Uh, the least amount of wind in some of the valley locations inland, but this will be a long duration storm. And the long duration makes us even more concerned because the longer you're looking at wind gusts of 60, 65 miles per hour, the more trees and the more power lines you're able to take down. So, Keisha and Jerry, this obviously is a very serious situation. We saw what Irene did along Long Island Sound, and we're concerned that not only are we going to get a repeat of Irene, it actually may be worse. And for the people who have just rebuilt their homes or are just getting back on their feet a year after Irene, this is just going to be hard to take, and we're going to have to make sure everyone gets out of the way before before Long Island Sound starts to rise tomorrow morning. Jerry, back to you. Yeah, that's right. Coastal flooding is going to be a big problem, and it will start well before the storm arrives. So that's going to be an issue. It will take a little bit of time for the water to rise tonight, but we're already looking at uh, tide levels that are two feet above normal, and the storm is still south of North Carolina, but we're already looking at the impact beginning across por portions of the Connecticut shoreline. All right, here's what to expect during the worst of the storm. We're looking at a 5 to 10 foot storm surge across Long Island. Island Sound, which, ooh, I'm a little short there. There we go. <laughs> I, got, I got a little taller there. Uh, five to ten foot surge, and that would just be a devastating coastal flood event across Long Island Sound. And it looks like that storm surge moves in during the evening hours. Now, the only way 
that we would see a lesser impact from Hurricane Sandy is if the storm speeds up. If the storm speeds up by three hours or four hours or five hours, it's possible that the highest surge will miss high tide. And we need to cross our fingers and hope that happens. That would be the only bit of good news here. So, so the, we're going to give you the worst case scenario. And again, fingers crossed that we'll be able to move this storm up a little bit and look at a lesser impact. Because remember, surge is what comes on top of the tide. So when the tide's low and you put a surge on top of it, it's not as bad. When the tide's high and you put the uh, 5 to 10 foot surge on top of it, then it's really bad. So I want to go through some of the specific areas and talk about the specific times we're looking at it. And, and I have three spots. I'm going to look at New London, New Haven, and Bridgeport. But these numbers are generally valid for the surrounding towns. So just because I'm talking about Bridgeport doesn't mean, you know, if you're in Fairfield, it will be drastically different. It will be fairly similar. The impacts will be at least. So the Monday morning high tide uh, looks fairly significant. It looks like we'll see a, a high tide of a, a total tide of about 6.3 feet and that comes in at 9.30 a.m. or so in New London. That would be moderate coastal flooding. So some roads, some local roads near the water may be shut down. There may be a little bit of minor flooding in some areas. Now by Monday evening, the Weather Service and the Hurricane Center are predicting a tide of 10 feet. That would occur around 10 o'clock. And just to put that in perspective, in New London, the 1938 tide was 10.6 feet, and Hurricane Carol in 1954 was 9.6 feet. So that would be right there in that vicinity. That would just be a devastating, devastating storm surge. All right, so let's take a look at New Haven. So the Monday morning tide, uh, we're looking at 10.3 feet. High tide comes in uh, during the morning hours, uh, around 11 o'clock or so. In Irene, the tide made it up to 11.6 feet. So that would be a significant, significant high tide. And then by Monday evening, we're looking at a tide near 16 feet. And that would be well above what happened during Irene in New Haven. Now in Bridgeport, same story. The Monday morning high tide will be um, uh, quite high. We're looking at a high tide that will be uh, close to what we saw during Irene, and then it gets worse from there. So a coastal flood warning in effect for Long Island Sound. Hurricane force wind warning in effect for the sound as well. And what will happen with the wind is the wind will pile the water into the sound. The water doesn't have anywhere to go back out of the sound into the Atlantic Ocean and it keeps rising. Each hour that goes on and each hour the winds pick up, the storm surge gets a little bit worse and then it will peak when the winds pick up and sort of pile the water right into the coast. So tomorrow on Long Island Sound it looks like we will have uh, numerous issues starting in the morning maybe as early as 8 or 9 o'clock, getting worse through the day. Even after the midday high tide goes out, I still think in the afternoon the tides may actually rise a little bit each hour that goes on because we'll have so much water stuck in Long Island Sound with nowhere to go. So this is a very serious situation. So here's the storm, current location off the coast of North Carolina, moving north. It's going to hook back toward the coast and make landfall on the Jersey Shore. Landfall is important. If it makes landfall around 9, 10 o'clock, that's a worst case scenario for Long Island Sound with the strongest winds coinciding with high tide. If it's a little bit earlier, we may luck out. But uh, it's unfortunately, we're, we're sort of splitting hairs here with a couple hours in either direction. will make a huge difference. We're going to hear and see a lot about East Haven in the coming days. Kosi Beach is always a very sensitive spot when it comes to storms. Especially when you consider it was just a year ago, many of the homes got swept out to sea. So let's go live right now to Jeff Sapperstone. He is in East Haven with the very latest on things happening there. Jeff. Well, Jerry and Keisha, we are on Cozy Beach and a lot of anxious feelings down here. But the good news, people are prepared this time. Just check out this brand new house right here, rebuilt after Irene last year. You can see it is completely boarded up. Nobody inside the home. If you take a look at the houses one by one, row by row down this uh, beach here, you can see most of them all boarded up right now. Evacuation orders, mandatory evacuation orders in place here in East Haven. Everyone needs to be out by 6 o'clock this evening. And in fact, we saw some police going through making sure that process is going smoothly. Some folks telling us, you know what, they want to get out this time and they want to get out early so they do not have to go through what they went through last time. Some people leaving just minutes before the hurricane struck last time, or I should say Tropical Storm Irene last time. Uh, let's just show you over here what the uh, situation looks like in the water, the uh, the beach, and you can see it's pretty calm out here right now, but that's, that's not going to be the case this time tomorrow. So everyone wants to get out. Everyone wants to stay safe. Again, shelter here in town at East Haven High School. That is open actually right now so people can go there. They can stay. 
But as we uh, were talking to some folks here, a lot of people are just um, getting out. They're going to stay with friends. They're going to hotels. They're packing up several days worth of clothing and belongings just to say, you know what? I don't want to be here when this latest storm strikes. And there's just a disbelief that this is happening again in the span of about a year. Uh, but uh, most people are saying that the town is prepared this time. Back to you guys, Jerry and Keisha. When you describe this entire scenario that we're looking at here, what are the chances? What are the chances of this happening in Connecticut just a year after we saw same two date. tremendous storms? Yeah, same day. The 29th. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, we had the October snowstorm on yeah. October 29th, uh, and last, so a year to the day of that destructive storm inland. Uh, not, not good, obviously. I mean, each year maybe you have a one in 50 shot of getting a storm like this, one in 25, one in 30, I'm not sure what the exact odds would be. Um, so, you know, this year we just happened to, to roll the dice uh, two years in a row and get a really significant storm. So I, I, think, I think we need to be prepared for uh, something that will be worse than Irene. And people who are living in Brantford or Old Saybrook or Westbrook or any of those towns that say, hey, the water was just short of me during Irene, we'll be okay this time. Not so, we have to look back potentially to Hurricane Carol and the 1938 hurricane to find storm surge levels uh, at what our computer models are predicting. And, and that, that is, you know, to be honest, that's a little bit frightening. Uh, we, ha we have, it's been a generation since we've had potentially storm this high, uh, storm surge this high. So you really, really need to heed the evacuation orders. We can't emphasize that enough. And that's why we're here giving you this information so you can make an informed decision on whether or not you want to stay. If, if, you, if you decide to stay in your house and you ignore the evacuation order, not only are you putting your own life at risk, you're also putting the lives at risk for first responders who may try to come and get you if you decide, hey, I've had enough, I want to get out. Well, by that point, the water's already come up, and we saw that happened in Cozy Beach uh, last time around, last August. So, 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 you know, it has a very important decision you have to make, but everything we're looking at, this looks bad, and, and the best thing you can do is heed the evacuation orders and listen to the people in your town, your police firefighters, everyone else, and, and make that decision and get your family out and be safe. Boy, the scary part is, you know, Hurricane Carol yeah. and the Hurricane of 38, those are storms my parents talked about. Mm. They remember them, so it's been more than a generation. Wow. Yeah, and we know Ryan doesn't use words like frightening lightly. No, nor does Brad. So we are listening. We'll be right back. Our coverage of Hurricane Sandy continues here on NBC Connecticut. Speaking about preparation, I found in my household mm -hmm. one of the best things to do was think about everything that I didn't have during Tropical Storm Absolutely. Irene, after the October snowstorm. Yep. I thought about everything that I didn't have mm -hmm. in place, what I wish that I could have had, mm -hmm. and that's what I got on the list this time. I went, I went to the grocery <laughs> store yesterday and I got Halloween candy too, it's almost Halloween. I okay. go, this is going to be trouble if I don't have power for a week. <laughs> Ryan in a sugar rush. <laughs> I hmm. know, wow. <laughs> Listen, we continue to get a lot of questions mm -hmm. in on our NBC Connecticut Facebook page from you, our viewers. And Ryan is going to answer some of those questions Absolutely. as he does so well. All right, let's start off with one from Catherine. She wrote, I heard the Atlantic is five degrees warmer than normal. That's why we're having this storm. Is that true? Um, it's probably not hurting the storm in any way. It's probably helping a little bit. It's not the reason why, though. Uh, what this storm is, is it's half a hurricane and half a large nor'easter, and it's just a, a amorphous, That's odd... That's why you're calling it a hybrid. Yeah, it's a hybrid, exactly. Yeah. It's half and half, and it's just this big... As, think of it as a big nor'easter okay. with a hurricane in the middle that's spinning around, and the whole thing's coming toward us. So, so we get the nor'easter, which is long duration. The winds are spread far out from the center. It takes a little while. And then during the peak of the storm, we get the hurricane that moves through. Um, and that's just not a good situation, no matter what way you look at it. So we get the, most of, uh, the worst of both worlds with this storm, unfortunately. It's a wicked scenario. Absolutely. Okay, we have another question here. I'm trying to decide with strong winds, should we leave our mobile home? And this question comes from Kathy, Kathy Tucker. Well, Kathy, that's a, that's a really good question. And it's really up to you and your family. Uh, most towns only issue evacuation orders for storm so if, if the trailer is in a, uh, the, the mobile home is in a very low area that's susceptible to storm surge, I'm sure they'll ask you to evacuate. If, if not and you're surrounded by trees and you don't think it's the best place to stay, you won't feel safe, it's probably not a bad idea to go find a friend or a family member. But I mean, that, that's really up to you because you may not be ordered to evacuate. But if you think your safety is in, in jeopardy or, or you, you're feeling scared once the winds pick up, totally understandable. And it's probably best before the winds pick up to make a decision to find a friend and sort of sort of hang out for a few hours while the worst of the storm is moving on through. Okay. All right, will the Waterford nuclear power plant be prepared for the storm surge 
Morgan wants to know that. Well, I mean, uh, Dominion is in charge uh, of, of Millstone, and they have certainly all sorts of safety guards in place. Obviously, a nuclear power plant is something that is of utmost importance to protect, and there's certainly no indication that there's going to be any issue down uh, on Niantic Bay with Millstone. And, and they prepare for all these kinds of things. They have disaster drills there, so we certainly have no reason to believe that they're anything but 110% ready for this storm. And they've had storm surges like this in the past in Niantic Bay and in, in in that southeastern Connecticut area storm surge. The game. This is the largest threat to human life our state has experienced in anyone's lifetime. Governor Malloy loud and clear on Hurricane Sandy. Tonight, families on the shoreline are boarding up and moving out from Bridgeport to New London. Thousands have been ordered to evacuate as Sandy closes in. And out-of-state power crews have arrived. How many of us could lose electricity and what it will take to get the lights back on? Take a look at a satellite view of this monster storm. By this time tomorrow night, we should be in the thick of it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for staying up with NBC Connecticut for the very latest on Hurricane Sandy. We've just learned President Obama has declared a pre-landfall emergency here in Connecticut. Now, that allows the state to request federal funding and other assistance in advance of Sandy's arrival. We have live team coverage tonight as the storm gets closer to Connecticut. We begin with our team of meteorologists, starting with Brad Field in the Weather Center. Brad. Well, Jerry and Keisha, this storm is going to be memorable through the interior for wind damage and power outages. This storm will be memorable along the Connecticut shoreline for the wind, but more importantly, severe coastal flooding. Let's go to the weather maps, and I want to start off tonight with uh, the satellite view of the storm. It's about 300 miles to the east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, still churning off to the northeast. We've got the 11 o'clock advisory in from the Hurricane Center. Here's the latest 75 mile per hour winds. The coordinates are there and the pressure is extremely low. Now take a look at the uh, course as depicted by the Hurricane Center at eight o'clock tomorrow evening. The storm is churning off New Jersey, south of Long Island. This is probably the peak time for severe weather here in the state of Connecticut. Again, that would be late tomorrow afternoon and early tomorrow evening. Then the storm ultimately moves up to Pennsylvania and uh, upstate New York, and the storm tends to weaken at that point. So what about the onset of damaging winds? At about two o'clock in the morning, coming up through Long Island Sound. So that's only two or three hours from now. By about eight o'clock in the morning, damaging winds of 50 miles per hour or greater along the southern third of Connecticut and then reaching the Massachusetts border by about lunchtime tomorrow. And from that point on, the storm will be raging. The worst of the storm tomorrow, late morning, through Tuesday late morning, plan on extended power outages and major to severe coastal flooding. Now, this is the huge aspect of the storm, the severe coastal flooding. Let's go over to my colleague, meteorologist Ryan Hanrahan. He's got all the specifics on that. Brad, everything we're looking at is very concerning for the potential storm surge destruction that will occur during the day tomorrow. It looks like we will see historic levels in a portion of Long Island Sound, especially from East Haven points west toward Greenwich and even toward New York City. So let's take a look at the weather maps right now and we'll take a look at what to expect in terms of storm surge because this will be one of the biggest issues. We're looking at a five to 10 foot storm surge across Long Island Sound, which would produce devastating and catastrophic coastal flooding. That surge level uh, would be record setting across a portion of Long Island Sound, including Stamford, Bridgeport, and New Haven. Now, to put this into some perspective, the storm surge during Irene was about four or five feet. We could easily be double that during the day tomorrow. So timing things out for you. Again, you need to rush any preparations to completion. They should be done by daybreak. If you have not heeded any evacuation orders, you should be leaving by daybreak at the latest. Squalls and winds, as Brad mentioned, will be moving ashore by daybreak. Wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour when the sun comes up. And then we're looking at strengthening winds uh, during Monday morning and serious coastal flooding. The coastal flooding on Monday morning could rival what we saw during Irene. 
but we're not done yet because we have a second high tide that's going to move in later on. So with hurricane conditions in the afternoon and evening, we're looking at destructive winds and storm surge. The worst of the surge will be during the evening on Monday, and this may set records across a portion of Long Island Sound. The worst flooding in some areas since Hurricane Carol in 1954 or the Great New England Hurricane of 1938. We'll talk more about this back to you. All right, Ryan. I mean, both of you guys are meteorologists, and I know that you're still relatively young, <laughs> but I, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, even no. in textbooks. N not really. No, I, you know, we're talking about it for a week, how kind of crazy the situation is and how unusual it is. You know, last year we had the storm in October, which was Phenomenal. I mean, yeah, a, a that huge blew snowstorm. my mind. And yeah. I've been around a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, he remembers Hurricane Carol. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but, but not the 38 one. No. Uh, the, but uh, yeah, I mean, just to get a storm like that in October was unbelievable. But uh, it's just amazing to see three storms with such tremendous impact to occur yeah. within 14 months. And, and I, I think one of the things, too, that, that I've been thinking about recently, in the last few years, before Irene, we've been fairly lucky with hurricanes and tropical storms. Yeah. We haven't seen a whole lot. There was a period between 1938, we had huge hurricanes in 38, 44, 54, 55, and 60. So in that 22 year period, you had five hurricanes that did significant damage. So, I mean, we have seen periods of time in the past where we've been very active and we've seen storms like this, you know, not, you know, back to back, but I mean, we've seen big time hurricanes and we are susceptible to hurricanes in Connecticut. We hope everyone is ready to go. And if you haven't evacuated, Now's the time. I mean, it's t it's time to get out. If you're sort of thinking about, yeah. you know, well, maybe we'll wait till things look a little bit no. better. Nothing. I mean, Garrett. I mean, nothing that I've seen tonight looks any better than what it did earlier this morning. Oh, not at all. You know, I think all week we were kind of looking ahead to this, saying maybe the storm will go out to sea. It really can't be this bad, but it looks like the worst case scenario is going to unfold. So it's definitely time to get out. I think you two should go get some rest because we're all going to be busy boys and girls for the next few days. Yes, we will. Yeah. He's going to stick around with some updates. We have updates evening. overnight. Absolutely. Nap time for me. Okay. Well, and we're really just getting started. Yes, we the will. The storm hasn't even hit yet. We do thank you for staying up with us. We'll be keeping an eye on Hurricane Sandy. And as we mentioned, bringing you updates throughout the night. Also stay up to date online, as always, at NBCConnecticut.com and on Facebook and Twitter as well. We're not going anywhere. See you later.